Ladies and gentlemen, Maggie Roush, Focus Right Senior Director, Research. They were, without a doubt, the most fearsome creatures ever to roam the earth. The largest was as heavy as a herd of elephants and as long as an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Predators and plant eaters alike, they appeared invincible. But not a single one survived. Theories abounded explaining their mass extinction. They fell victim to their own appetites, ran out of new food sources, and starved. Smaller mammals adapted faster. They ate the dinosaurs young and eventually rose to dominance themselves. And my personal favorite, their bodies grew too big to be operated by their comparatively tiny brains. Most likely, what happened was this. A meteor hit the Earth with, with energy two million times that of the most powerful nuclear bomb, sparking huge fires, followed by darkness beneath a huge layer of ash, and years of freezing temperatures. The dinosaurs were probably the first to go, and most life on Earth followed. What survived? Ferns adapted the capability to pho photosynthesize the limited available light and grow high or low to exploit niches within the dying forests. The tiny spores they used to reproduce spread on the wind, allowing them to float their way to more favorable territory. Birds also survived. Their small size allowed them to live off of the tiniest organisms, and flight enabled them, like the ferns, to find ecosystems where they thrived. The survivors were small and nimble and possessed the right technology for the times. Adapt, explore, find a niche, master technology, feed on opportunities others think too small, these capabilities have separated winners from losers for at least 65 million years. The leaders in our industry use them to get where they are today, at a point of unprecedented scale and dominance. What do I mean by dominance? Well, through a combination of organic growth and acquisition, Booking and Expedia together doubled their share of the world's OTA market from 2011 through 2017. C-Trip has been on an equally impressive tear. Together, these three now account for more than 90% of global OTA bookings. It looks like there's not much room left for new entrants, but the CEOs of those leading companies have told us why they can't sit still. There's no one at Expedia who's sitting comfortably in their chairs, including myself here. You know, this is a business that's moving very quickly. The minute you stumble, someone's gonna catch up to you. Uh, and they'll take advantage of your weaknesses in a second. So we've got to keep moving and, and keep innovating, and hopefully we can continue to be one of the leaders in the field. Keep moving, keep innovating. Not always easy to do when you're so big. So the big companies, uh, you know, as in the book, right, Dilemmas, uh, Innovators Dilemma, have problems uh, to do very creative innovations. And the problem is, you know, it's too centralized, too hard to coordinate within a company. You don't have the right incentive, you don't have the right people. Is there really an even playing field anywhere? Maybe in untapped territory. We have so much ramp left. It's so exciting, the things that we can still accomplish. One way to do it, let's take focus right research, for example. How many regions, Doug, have online penetration of all products above 50%? All products, all, all sectors? Products. Yeah, yeah. Uh, zero. Zero. Zero regions. Zero. Yes. Gee, that seems like an awful lot of opportunity for everybody in our space. Just start right there. And we can stop right there. It's true. Less than half of travel is booked on OTAs and supplier sites. Segments such as hotel, rail, and activities are all well over 50% offline. And there are whole regions still coming online. Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East are all at or below 40% penetration. Shift the device, and there's even more room left to grow. Less than a fifth of US online travel bookings are made on mobile. Startups, local players, and legacy brands are all looking to this new territory for growth. Will scale prevail? 
Will more focused and smaller players stake faster claims? And what about those companies that dwarf the titans of travel with much greater access to both capital and consumer attention? The unexploited is often unexploited for a reason. Fragmentation, disorganization, low margins, slow uptake, lack of connectivity. These messy places are often the fertile fields of the future, but cultivating them requires a magic mix of stubbornness idiosyncrasy, creativity, and timing. When that mix aligns, a seemingly small force can cause huge shifts. It's happened time and again throughout history. I want to share three stories. The first is of a math professor and Navy admiral who put an indelible stamp on computing at a time when only one in three American women worked outside the home. She believed that computing code could be built based on English, but her colleagues rejected the idea. Computers, they said, only do arithmetic. Nevertheless, she persisted, and eventually, Grace Hopper co created the coding languages now considered the foundation for modern computing, still used more than 60 years later by banks and insurance companies. Her brilliance has been recognized with 40 honorary degrees, a college at Yale in her name, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She, her ideas and work changed the course of technology. The second story is of a failed entrepreneur. Wang Xing's first business was a Friendster copycat. When that failed, he started another social network, and another. His third, he sold for $2 million. Not bad except that company went on to raise $740 million in its IPO without him. His next project was a microblog, shut down by the government in 2009. In 2010, he started a Groupon clone called Meituan. Far from an original idea, it was one of thousands of group buying sites battling it out in China. But he out-executed the competition, and his company has gone on to revolutionize food and retail delivery, spawn copycats of its own, raise $4.2 billion in its IPO this September, and challenge the dominance of one of the world's three biggest OTAs. The third is the story of a once discarded idea that I'm sure we'll talk about more over the next two days. Several decades ago, AI researchers occupied two camps. The rule-based researchers believed the best way to build artificial intelligence was to code the right rules into computers using if-then relationships. To identify an image of a cat, rule-based AI meant encoding the ability to recognize a circle with two triangles on top. In the other camp, neural networks. The idea that artificial layers Artificial neurons could learn on their own when given enough data and the right algorithms. The AI is fed millions of images of cats and develops a working understanding of what a cat looks like. Neural networks had held the potential for addressing more complex problems, but researchers struggled to get them to work as envisioned, and they were sidelined in the scientific community. But when computing power and larger available data sets finally caught up, everything changed. In 2010, neural networks made a near instantaneous move from the sideline to the center of AI research and applications. This long discarded idea enabled AI as we know it today, the foundation for voice-powered assistance, instantaneous translation, autonomous vehicles, and who knows what else in the years to come. So what will be the next big shift in online travel? It could come from one woman who sees possible where everyone else sees impossible. It could come from a serial entrepreneur with more failure under his belt than success. Or it could come when a discarded idea meets new conditions that allow it to flourish. There's a good chance that the source of that next big thing will be in this room over the next two days. So yes, we will talk about giants fighting giants, but we will also talk about vision, perseverance, timing, and the ability to build something new on what came before, the difference between fading into distant memory and carrying travel into the future. 
Welcome to center stage at the Focus Right Conference. Let's start the show. Mm -hmm. 